Hi fellow travelers, I am Tori and welcome to this week's video. If you're enjoying my content, please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. I really appreciate all of the support and feedback from you guys. In this week's video, I am going to be showing you how to edit your photos from either a Zoom or FaceTime photo shoot. start this week's video I really want to say a huge shout out and thank you to all of you for your really positive and amazing feedback from last week's video I had so much fun reading through the comments and engaging with you guys and I really love hearing from you so I want to say a huge thank you to you for that so in this week's video I'm going to be using the photos that I took during my photo shoot with Danielle I've selected two of my favorite photographs that I'm going to show you guys how to edit so in order to edit these photos I'm going to be using a program called Adobe Lightroom Classic it's a really powerful tool and if you want to take your photography to the next level or to a more professional space I would really recommend investing in this program without further ado let's get editing so the first photo that I'm going to be editing is one of Danielle actually standing on her dining room table so the first problem that I can see it's not cropped you can see like really weird things in the background and in this case it doesn't look like a style choice to include the zoom elements so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop it and just even out the angle so something that I am going to do is I am going to keep two strips of black line on either side of the photo just to give it more of a retro vintage feel so the next thing that I do, and I do this for all of my photos, is I head over to something called the tone curve. So most people don't even know that this exists in Lightroom and it's really powerful because what it does is it allows you to adjust like the dark and light areas within your photo. So what I always do when I'm basically starting a photo is I create a little S graph with the tone curve. So I'm going to go all the way down here to the bottom to my darks and I'm going to drag it down just a smidge. Then in the middle, I'm going to make sure that that point is directly in the middle. And then at the top of my S curve, I'm going to drag that point up a bit. So what we can see that that's done is it's just immediately created a bit more contrast in the image. Because at the end of the day, what makes our images interesting is that contrast between light and dark, between different colors on the color wheel. So now that I'm done playing around with my tone curve, I'm not going to do too much fancy stuff for this photo, is I'm going to go into the basic section of my panel. So here I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring my highlights down slightly and then I'm going to also bring my shadows down slightly. I feel like this photo might have been a bit too bright so I just want to give it a bit more depth. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my vibrance and saturation panels. So personally I don't like using saturation that much, I feel like it makes the colors too crazy and too wild, so therefore I'm going to use vibrance and I'm just going to pull that up just a little bit to give those colors you know a little bit more of a way to pop. So now that I'm done editing the basics I'm going to go down to what's called the HSL panel. So I'm not going to do too much with my hue, I'm just going to change the blues. So the hue is a really powerful tool because it actually allows you to adjust and change what that color is. So here I want my blues to be a bit more of like a, a teal kind of like that, you know, Cali vibes blue. So I'm just bringing that up slightly to give the corner of the image like a nice blue feel. Now I'm going to go down to my saturation panel. So I really like the color of her shirt and I want it to pop more. So I'm actually going to deepen the orange color just to make that stand out a lot. Also, her skirt is kind of like a purple, so I'm going to deepen the color of the purples just to make them stand out. The same thing with the blues, deepening the color of it so that it really, really stands out. I'm not going to mess around with luminance here because honestly, I think her skin tone's kind of okay. I might just up, oh, actually, I am going to up the magenta, but just to take away some of that, um, that purple around her face. There we go. Perfect. Okay, next we're gonna to go to something called the split toning panel. So I love the split toning panel because what it allows you to do is adjust the color of the highlights and the shadows within your image. And something that I really love is the contrast between the orange and the teal highlights and shadows. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag my highlight hue into the orange section and I'm just gonna up the saturation of that a little bit. Then I'm going to drag my shadows all the way to the blue section and I'm going to up the shadows of my blue. Next, I'm going to go to the detail panel. So something that I noticed with these images is that sometimes it helps reduce some of the computer static if you pull your luminance all the way up. So I'm just going to like throw the luminance all the way to 100. Don't do that unless you're editing photos with a computer screen, okay? Never do that for a normal image. 
Then we'll go to lens correction, make sure that you've got the remove chromatic aberration and enable profile correction set. What I am going to do is under the effects panel, I'm going to add in some grain. So what the grain does is it stops it from looking like a computer generated image and turns it into more of a vintage image. So my amazing friend Angela, who is an incredible photographer, taught me this trick and it has helped so much in editing photos of a screen. Next, I'm going to go to my calibration panel. So the calibration panel actually allows you to reset the colors within an image, which is crazy powerful. So to further enhance that contrast of the orange and the blue and teal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red primary hue and I'm going to slide that all the way up. I'm going to do the same thing with my green. I know that it looks weird now, but the blue is going to counterbalance it. And then I'm going to slide my blue down to the bottom. So what that's done is it's even further created more contrast in those colors. So because I feel like it's a bit too orange, it's like too much of it, I'm just going to drag the saturation for my orange down a bit, which has already fixed her skin tone while keeping that gorgeous color difference. So I'm pretty happy with this photograph. I'm gonna show you guys the before and after. I think that it looks really cool. And yeah, I really like it. Next photograph that I'm going to edit was actually a photo that I got by luck because Danielle put her phone on the floor and I was like, whoa, 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 that's so cool, stop, stay there, stay there. So again, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna crop this image. Once again, I'm gonna go straight down to my tone curve and create that stunning S curve that helps me make my images so contrasty and I love it. Then I'm going to go to the basics panel. So for this one, because I really want the sky in the background to pop, I'm gonna to go to my highlights and I'm gonna bring my highlights down because what that does is it deepens the richness of the sky. Then I'm gonna to go to my shadows and I'm really gonna bump those shadows up just so that I can see that stunning detail in her hair and on her mesh top. I'm gonna to leave the rest of it. I'm actually gonna leave the vibrance for now because this is already a very, very bright image. So in the hues, I wanna play around with this orange a bit because the orange looks kind of yellow to me and I would prefer it to be a bit deeper. So I'm gonna see where I prefer the color of it. I kind of like it right over there, which is stunning. The other thing that I wanna change is the color of the sky. Right now, it's kind of like a normal boring sky color, but I wanna give it a more stylized feel. So I'm gonna take the blue and I'm going to drag it all the way to the bottom so that we get the stunning, almost like bluey green sea, I don't know how else to describe it kind of color. And I think it looks stunning because again, the contrast between the orange and the blue. Next, I'm gonna go to my saturation panel. So her skin's looking kind of saturated right now, which I'm not enjoying. So I'm just gonna bring the saturation of the orange down a little bit just so that she looks a bit more normal and like less orange. Now I'm going to skip my split toning for now and I'm gonna go straight to the detail panel, throwing my luminance all the way up, going down to lens correction, click remove chromatic aberration and enable lens profiling. Once again, adding on a ton of grain to make this super, super vintage. And now underneath my calibration panel, I'm going to again, pull that red up, pull the green up, looks really strange, the blue will fix it, pull the blue down and it creates this like really cool contrasty between the oranges and the blues. However, I'm finding that this is just a bit too much. So I'm gonna pull down the saturation again of my red primary, just so that she looks a bit more natural in the image. And once again, that is now how I've edited this stunning image. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And if you wanna see more of the photographs that I've taken from this shoot, as well as other Zoom shoots, make sure to check out my Instagram. I'm gonna link it down below. Also, if you guys have any questions about Lightroom or how to use the software or any other questions about editing, please comment them down below and I will make sure to answer all of your questions. Now, if you enjoyed my video, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. It's like a little personal hug from each of you. So I really appreciate it when I see them and I can't wait to see you guys all again next week.